Amen. We want to welcome those who have tuned in through uh, YouTube, and welcome to the garage. The garage is really designed as a part of our campus of five acres, but the garage is designed to bring Jesus more and more into your life, to give you answers for daily problems, to help you overcome, to help you refocus. And so we welcome you into the garage with all of us, and we want you to just become a part. Hope you grab your Bible, hope you grab your notebook, and just follow along with them as we share the word with you. This is one of the integral parts of the garage. We have other things. We pray for the sick. We, we see after your needs. And we want you to stay in touch with us. God bless you. Join with us. Father, we come right now and we just appreciate your word. We appreciate your spirit. We appreciate the fact that you sent your son. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We know on the third day he rose again from the dead. And then 50 days after that, he established the church, the church of the born-again believers. And Lord God, the church has been growing steadily all through this this time during the church age, and one day soon we'll be called home to meet the Lord in the air. Until that day, we want, Lord God, continue to share our faith and continue to encourage others to meet the Lord and to walk with the Lord. In Jesus' name, and we all said, all right, we've been talking about walking in newness of life. Now that we're born again, we have to learn to walk from the inside out, amen? Amen. We have to learn to walk in newness of life. And, and here's the key, and you've heard me teach it a lot. The key is basically there's a lot of wonderful Christians that get born again, get spirit-filled, but then begin to walk with Jesus naturally, out of the natural man. We know in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, the Bible says that the natural man receives not the things that are of the spirit, for to him... They are foolishness. Why? Because a lot of times when we are walking with God, and if we're doing it in the natural and not from the spiritual, that we have, we place natural understanding on spiritual things. I had a, a lady one time um, uh, years ago when we were starting one of our first churches, there was a bunch of our youth that were going to this lady's Bible study. No problem. Bible studies are good. But somebody kept telling me, you need to come, Pastor, and just check it out. Make sure that, uh, you know, everything's kosher, everything's right. So I did. And when she, she, I, I said, when, when I get there, don't introduce me as Pastor Carrie. People change when you do that. <laughs> so I got there. I got a chance to visit. And one of the things the lady did, she says, you know, I'm a believer of the Bible, but we're not going to use the Bible in this study. In fact, we're beyond the Bible. So what I basically brought that up is there's a lot of people trying to apply natural means, natural understanding, natural circumstances to daily spiritual applications, and they don't work. It just frustrates the believer and to the point, they want to give up. Now, we've heard years ago, and, and maybe here recently, too, that a lot of Christians burn out. We should be burning on and not burning out. What do you mean? Uh, well, when we're doing things out of our own air energy, we're going to get tired easily. But if God is energizing us to do something, we're going to operate in his energy. This is the walk in the Spirit, talk in the Spirit, it says to walk in love. All of these things are spiritual things. So when we're dealing with life, we have to either learn to respond from the realm of the spirit, or we're going to get frustrated because we're reacting in the normal natural flesh. Look at your neighbor and say, oh me, oh my. Okay, so the treasure, where the treasure of our heart is, there we are also. So the subtitle of this is The Treasure of Our Hearts. It's the church's day to soar. It's our time to be excited. 
It's our time to be the witness, the testimony that God purposes us to be, amen? And you know, we have been given all kinds of power at our disposal. When you and I focus on the newness of life in Christ, we rise above the circumstances of life, and God begins to empower us with his wisdom and with his energy and with his spirit. Someone say amen. amen. But folks, it does take time to study it and have understanding of who we are in Christ. And if we don't study it, we'll again drop back into that natural man and try to do things naturally. Now, I'm amazed because my pastor taught us well. We wouldn't leave him alone. We would stay at his house when he asked after an hour or two, he told us to go home so him and his wife could get some sleep. But we would hang out, he'd feed us, and he would just pump into us understanding, and he would give us those little fill-in-the-blanks, you know, those special little fill-in-the-blank times where, you know, we're missing a question or something, and he just says, and by the way, when you're dealing with people that are unruly, here's some areas that you can deal with them. And he would give us all those little nuggets that oftentimes we don't get from a sermon or such, you know, and my heart cries out for the church to have the wisdom of God and the fullness of God to be that testimony of God in the earth. Because look at the world today. They're looking for the answer. Many of them are looking to the church to be that example. Amen. And yet, people don't go to church. People hardly do this. They hardly read their Bible. And then they're sometimes thrown into a circumstance or a situation, even like me with this foot. I wasn't expecting any of this. But you know what? I haven't lost my joy. I haven't lost my hope. Why? Because it's not in the physical part. It's not in to my expect expectations only. It's in walking with the Lord. So if I can encourage you, it's our time to really ask God to help train us to walk with him, to really understand his wisdom, to really treasure who he is. Amen? See, our old man is stuck on natural means, natural ways, while God wants us to focus on the principles of his new life. We become what we treasure. So a lot of times, you'll, you, 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 if you can watch yourself, as you begin to grow in the Lord, things begin to happen, how many weird distractions come your way to pull the treasuring of your heart? What we treasure, my oh my, we're going to spend time with. I used to, when I was younger, I used to collect coins. I used to treasure the old coins. One of my favorites, were, and you're probably going to laugh at this, is, is pennies. Indian head pennies and old Lincoln pennies, 1909 SBBD penny that's worth 100 some odd dollars, you know, and I collected them and get them all that. You know, I treasured them. So guess what I was involved in? We get involved what we treasure. You treasure your spouse, you're involved with them. You, amen? You treasure your hobbies, you're involved with them. Can you say amen? But the Bible says to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, we know the kingdom of God is God's dominion, power, his influence, and his very nature, right? And his righteousness, uh, we seek his righteousness. The only way that we can have his righteousness, that's just static on my coat. The only way we can have his righteousness is by exchanging our old life with his new life. God made him to be sin who knew no sin, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, 2 Corinthians 5.21. So you and I need to proceed, study. We need to show ourselves purposeful and favorable and even faithful and treasuring and putting God pure first and the pureness of his provision first. When we do that, I mean, like, I like to fish. Uh, man, get me in Montana with a fishing pole. And I know where to go. I know what to do. The only trouble is, you never think about those things until you're there. 
Last time I went fishing in Montana, it was great. I caught some fish. But you got to be careful because if you're going to be there five days, you don't want to catch all your fish on the first day. Because freezers, you don't carry along on vacation. Hello. There's other things to think about in preparation for fish. I love to treasure fishing, but I know that I fish better with Jesus. You follow what I'm saying? Some of us like to go out and enjoy some good food, and we like to pass it around when there's good food around, so then we go out and get a bummer of a deal, you know what I'm saying? And we go out, and so there's certain things that we do. So there are certain things that we can treasure that God allows us to treasure. But let me encourage you to bring Jesus in on that. For example, if you're going to go out to eat, you heard it was great, never been there before, say, God, anoint the cooks. Anoint the chefs, anoint the servers, Lord God, so that when they serve the food, it turns into even better food than they thought. You see, God wants us to walk with him, to treasure him, to bring him, involve him in everything that we do and say. And why? Because it enriches us and causes us to glow, causes us to emulate his presence. And people can see. We don't need a, a bumper sticker. People can see that God is on us because we're spending that time with us. Now, remember, you and I don't have to fear because he's not mad at us. He's not mad at the world. See, but the way you hear some people preach, oh, he's going to judge this and look at this problem here and look at this problem here. The whole purpose of it is for you to look at the problem. Let me ask you something. If I go out and do something stupid, is God going to love me any less? So I can't have to, I, I can't operate on a performance basis. But when we were old in our old ways, in the old life that we used to live, we, we performed. What do you mean? We tried hard for our teachers, for our parents. You know, I wanted to be first place at the, in, in, on the band team, you know, being a drummer. You follow what I mean? But in the kingdom of God, he's loving you unconditionally unconditionally. He's taking care of you unconditionally. Amen? And it's not based on your performance. It's simply based on you being with them. And so in the beginning, we know the story, because I'm really going to cover it next week. But in the beginning, we know the story that God would come down in the cool of the day and walk and talk with Adam and Eve. Do you think that God wants that to stop? No, so we need to be inviting him and welcoming him. That's what the word preeminence means, giving God preeminence. Welcoming him, welcoming, welcoming him into our midst in our daily walk. Can you say amen? Go with me to Matthew chapter 6. We're going to pick up at verse 19 through 20 or 21. Kind of let me know when you get there. You know, I'm a fairly decent drummer, although I only play at drums now, kind of like a hobby. But when I play and I worship, God steps in and makes me play well. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Did you get it? All right. I, I watch facial expressions a lot. So, <laughs> All right. Do not lay up for yourselves. Look at the term, yourselves. What Jesus is doing is explaining to his disciples, now your life has changed. You're not living for yourself. Okay? He's trying to get them ready that when he dies and rises again, there's going to be a new kingdom, a new set of principles that are in operation. In order for us to be a success in any degree, we have to operate on spiritual principles and not be breaking the principles of God expecting a miracle. We got people who will make up stuff. We got people, I'm just speaking generally so that you understand. We got people coming in at church, even a small one like this, wearing their wares of supernaturalness. Coming in, I can prophesy, I can do all this, I can do all that. And yet you look at them and everything's focused on them. Well, Jesus is trying to get that there's going to be a time 
where all of our focus isn't for ourselves. We are included in the package, but our focus now is God. Someone say amen. In our focus with God, we're covered. You see, if I'm praying for you diligently, I don't need to pray for myself because I'm being covered. Because I'm praying for you. As a man sows, so shall he reap. But somebody that hasn't switched over from the natural into the supernatural hasn't spent the time to let God train them or retrain them how to live spiritually will pray. And so the first few months of their life is, Lord, me, 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 me. I need this. I need that. And, and God doesn't fault that at all. But after a while, the me, me, me part should change. <laughs> Can you say amen? God bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him. Why? Because I'm covered too. So he says, basically, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth. Where are the treasures at? Oh, if I get that new house, I'm going to be happy. If I get that new wife, forgive me, dear. <laughs> I'm certainly going to, I'm trying to, you know, I'm, I'm trying to appeal to it because people are watching through TV. So, you know, we have that tendency. If I could get that new piece of equipment, I know I'll be happy. You know, that new car. I have a little conviction. I'll throw it out. Never buy a new car. And and if you did, don't get mad. Because the moment you drive it off the parking lot, it's $6,000 less. Get a year older or get a used car or something. And now they're even jacking up the prices on those. But see, I went and bought a $3,000 car. Probably last another year or two. And somebody said, well, you should have got a brand new car. You should have got that. You should have, should have, should have. Hey, my life is not consisting of what I, what you tell me I should have. It's what God tells me. And, and the sad thing about it is, is a lot of times we hear what everybody's telling us, but what God's saying to us is a little different. We got to be careful in that area. Are you still with me? Don't lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth, rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. We just heard of somebody uh, of our son-in-law where their next-door neighbors, thieves broke in and stole all thousands of dollars worth of stuff. People on drugs. Okay, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. And you can underline the word heaven and put higher places because that would work there. If you put lay up for yourself treasures in a higher place, that works too. Why? Because spiritual things are higher than physical things. Can you say amen? So we're not losing the translation there. Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys, neither thieves do not break in and steal. And this is where God gave me the revelation that Satan can't follow you into the spirit. Why can't he follow you into the spirit? Because He's been locked out. He can yell at you while you're going into the spirit. He can try to distract you before you do go into the spirit. But if you learn what I'm going to teach you today, everything that you do and everything that you do it and why you do it will go into heaven deposits rather than just earthly self deposits. And and the reason being is it depends on from what area from the new creation or the old creation, that you do the the action. If you seek to train your children, and you do it because Jesus wants you to, and because you want to love the Lord, then you are depositing in a heavenly bank account. But you correct your children just because you want them to do what you want them to do, then that is a correction, but it's where moths can steal where attitudes can change, resentment can build in their natural areas. So we want to, how do we refocus it into a heavenly realm? By letting it come out of our spirit when we do it. Amen. I mean, I I can say to my wife, and you can laugh at this, honey, looking at you makes time stand still. 
Or I could say it in the natural, staring at you, at your face, can stop a clock. Well, I'm saying it because it's absolutely ridiculous. You know, you follow what I'm saying? But that's who we are. We're, we're natural people as well as spiritual. So take a step back when you're, when you're involved in things and bring out the spiritual end of it so that whatever you do is deposited in a higher realm, in the heavenly realm. Can you say amen? You see, when you treasure God... You treasure the things that you do for him. You read your Bible because you love him. Not because you get great joy and you get a little tickle on your shoulder. And you tell others how much that you appreciate them and how much you care. Why? Because God's love compels you. You see, you're depositing in a higher area. Now, Satan comes in with a counterfeit and he has you do things out of legalism. Well, if you don't pray more, you're never going to get anything from God. How many's ever heard something like that? Kind of nod your head at me. Right. That's legalism. Now you're resenting praying. Amen. Now you're resenting going to church. I think that's what the enemy sold to a lot of people. They resent going to church because they don't know if they're going to get chewed on, get blessed. Get corrected, something they forgot. You see, they're acting in the natural, trying to get the spiritual things. And it doesn't operate that way. Can you say amen? Best thing to do, man, when the music starts, run down here to the altar and let your tears flow. And if you don't feel like running down here to the altar, sit where you are and let your tears flow. Let the love of God come out of your heart. Why? You're depositing in a higher realm. You're depositing in a higher phase. You're, at, you're operating in a place where Satan cannot steal. You, so he might be able to, to do something and work in the net, and that's natural with my foot, but he isn't stealing my joy. He can't get in there. So you've got to get a revelation and ask God to teach you what it means to be in the spirit, to walk in the spirit, to think in the spirit, it sounds like it's more harder than it is, but actually it just takes training. The Bible tells us that we have our senses. They need to be exercised to discern good from evil, how, what is spiritual, what is not. Someone say, oh, me. Okay. So lay up for yourself treasures in a higher place or in heaven. For where your treasure is, verse 21, there your heart will be also. So we have a lot of Christians in their transition of a being saved and getting, walking with God. There's a transitioning time. And a lot of times they're phasing in and out of a higher realm. How many has ever had something said to you and you're about ready to say something back and something inside of you goes, don't bother. Smile a lot. Why? Because God's trying to keep you from having moth and thieves. Who's the thief in the Bible, by the way? Satan is. Religion is. Man's ways are. They're all designed to steal. I mean, the system of the world. If I just got a raise on my job, I just got a promotion, I would get it. So you get the promotion, you go three months, and the boss fires you. I had that happen one time. They didn't know what to do with me. I was a Kelly temp. And I was out doing all of their workers and everything. I was having a blast. I was a, a uh, uh, clothing inspector. My job was catch the buttons missing and the, and the stitches missing and look them all up before they go to the next step, before they go to the stores. We did a lot of Oshkosh Bagosh and a lot of all these things that go to these stores. And and let me tell you, the same clothing go to different stores with different prices. So our job was to try to find any flaws before that happened. And I got to the point where I could go as high as I could go. Supervisors were getting nervous. Do we make him a supervisor? Do we make him permanent? Because I was a temp. He said, ah, I know what we'll do. We'll go ahead and let him hire on 
let the guy over on receiving hire my no heat. The guy was meaner than a junkyard dog. He, he had everybody else do it. Nobody could work with him any length of time because he'd irritate him so bad they'd quit. I get to working for him and, and doing my best, and it was not good enough, and he fired me. Now, I don't know about you, but it's pretty humiliating getting fired, <laughs> especially if you know that you can, you can work pretty good. Amen? But that's how the world is set up. It's set up to bleed you, put the carrot in front of your face, hoping that you're going to stay in that realm, hoping that you're going to make changes in the physical realm, and you're not going to find Christ, you're not going to walk in the Spirit, you're not going to have heavenly deposits. Someone say, oh my. A couple of points I want to bring, these are talking points. We need to place our attention on the supernatural place that we now have in Jesus Christ. Say amen. To this world is only a reflection of the wonderful life we have in Christ. Why we want a reflection only to find out it's just a reflection. The real stuff is in Christ. Amen? Things that are here in the physical realm are temporary. For we look not at the things that are seen, but at the things that are not seen. Are you with me? We are not to place our trust in created things. What was Adam's big fault? He got his eyes on the created woman that God made for him. Forgot how to take authority over the devil. Hello? Probably, I don't know, I'm going to ask him. i going to say, why? Were well, you complimented Adam when the devil was paying attention to your wife too? Because some people marry this gorgeous woman. Big mistake. More gorgeous than they're ever used to. Now, let me recommend that I married up. She's a gorgeous woman. But she isn't some Bambi. Why? Because Bambis, people play with Bambis, flirt with Bambis, mess with Bambis. And if you're not a Bambi yourself, you're going to lose them. That's why doctors run off with their secretary and musicians do crazy things like that. Because they always think the grass is greener on the other side. It's not. You forget that the, the grass that's on the other side got a bunch of horses in it. And you're liable to run into a meadow muffin or two. But what I'm really saying to you is we have a tendency to want to parade our trophies in the physical realm around. And listen, you parade your trophy around without the protection of God where neither moth or rust or thieves break in. And the thief is going to come and rip you right off. You need to follow, if you can, in your studies in the scripture, how many places it says if, if you don't listen carefully, you're going to get ripped off. If you don't see properly, you're going to ri get ripped off. Jesus even said it this way. If, you have a, if your hand offends you, what? Pluck it out. And if your eye offends you, what? Pluck it out. What's he saying? Well, this is a metaphor. And are you really saying there's going to be piles of hands and eyes? Could be. But what I'm really saying is, what does your hand do? Your hand does things. So what you do, if it doesn't glorify God, get rid of it. That's what he's saying. And if your eye is positioning yourself like Adam's was on the backside of his naked wife, chasing her around the forest in the garden, you miss the devil coming in to rip you off. And the Bible says, don't make any other gods before him. Why? Because legally you open the door for the enemy to come right in and rip us off. So there are certain responsibilities that we can cure by setting our affection or treasuring our things that are in heaven rather than on earth. 
So if you do have a nice car, which I'm looking at one lady that does, put your hand on it, dedicate it to God, say, God, this is your car, and I place it in heavenly places. And if it's not brand new, but even used, Lord, keep it running. Keep it going. Be a blessing, Lord. Thank you so much for it. So what happens, see, is we have to retrain ourselves with God's help. We have to relocate ourselves with God's help to keep things in the realm where Satan can't rip us off. Someone say amen. Turn to someone else and say amen. All right, so the third point I want to bring underneath Matthew 6 is what we treasure, we tend to want, we tend to follow, only to realize that it's subject to decay and corruption. That peanut buster parfait. You're going to eat it. It's going to be gone. But, oh, I enjoyed it when I ate it. You did until you dropped a bunch on your lap. You see what I'm saying? So life is filled with lessons, but if we keep the lesson understanding pure, what totally is in the heavenly realm, what's on an earthly realm, then we can sit and enjoy a peanut buster parfait in a heavenly realm, and even if we drop something on our, our wonderful clothing, we can laugh about it. Our joy is not stolen. Why? Because what we're treasuring isn't what we're wearing. What we're treasuring is God, and he's allowing us to eat a peanut buster parfait. I know it sounds pretty simple, but I'm talking to the people also on YouTube. So if you are out there and you love the Lord, don't become some kind of pawn being manipulated by emotions and all that. Learn to make your deposits. Learn to do things for the right reason. Learn to adjust yourself so that the enemy, who's just doing his job, being a thief, can't break in and steal. All right, the next point is, true life and promotion comes only from the Lord. So we're to set our love upon him, and he will not disappoint us. The last point I want to bring under Matthew 6 is, seek ye first the kingdom of God, right? Right? Now, remember when Jesus said this to his disciples, he hadn't rose from the dead yet, so this is still what testament? Old Testament. See, the New Testament didn't get in operation until Jesus rose from the dead, even though it's in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Until the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the new kingdom hadn't been instilled. Holy Spirit hadn't been poured out. Okay, day of Pentecost, the church was born. Church age came into operation. So he's telling his disciples, if you really want to get anything from God, the Father, you got to seek, crave, want after the kingdom. Now, the kingdom of God was not in the earth. The only one that represented the kingdom was the prophet, priest, the king. And many times Jesus says the kingdom is at hand. And he'd reach out his hand. Why? Because he was sent to bridge the Old Testament with the New Testament, showing that he's fulfilling all the demands of the law, and in Christ, he is fulfilling all of that, and he's taking us into a higher realm. He's leading captivity captive and giving gifts to men and women. Are you with me? So we've got to do it according to God's principles. So you can't get a Christian acting like the devil during the week Come in on Sunday and get healed. Why? Because the enemy's already chiseled away at what is a heavenly place. You want a better marriage? Place your husband or wife in heaven. Keep them up there in that realm. One of the things that helped me early on in our marriage with Linda is God says, that's my daughter, son. And I do not take lightly anything said rudely or against my daughter. Uh-oh. Suddenly I started seeing things in a heavenly realm instead of just a natural realm. 
well, you should tell your daughter she's pretty stupid. You know, people talk like that. Thank God forbid I don't. Although we've had our all, all of us have had our intense fellowship. Can you say amen? Let's go to Romans 6, please. Our treasure, to walk in newness of life. That's our treasure. I want to walk, walk in the newness of life that Jesus gave me because he went through hell and back to give it to me. Again, our treasure to walk in the newness of life. Matthew 6. Oh, Romans 6. I'm into Matthew, I'm sorry. Matthew 6, verse 4. Romans 6. Romans 6, verse 4. First thing I said was Romans, and then I said Matthew. Then I probably repeated Matthew. I'm back to Romans. No, it's Romans 6, verse 4. Sorry, apologize, guys. Therefore, whenever you see a therefore, it's therefore the previous verses. Therefore, we are buried with him through what? Baptism into death. Can't, can't, can't irritate a dead man. Can't insult a dead man. Okay, look what it says. Through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk. Now, that's the Greek word parapateo, not peel a potato. Parapateo means to make a habit, make a trail. That we make it a habit, we, we beat our own new trail in newness of life. So it's going to take some learning. It's going to take for us to be trained spiritually. How to walk in the spirit. Can you say amen? Can you recognize when somebody's in the flesh or in the spirit right away? What do you mean? <laughs> well, sure you can. But there are other times it's a little hard. Like you're out buying a car and salesman is there and he's doing this and doing that. You got to learn to listen to the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit wants you to do, not just what the salesman says. Amen. So are you able to switch on your spirit in the midst of a problem or a situation where everything is demanding of you? Are you able to quiet down and listen to what God will say to you? Because what God will say will always be right. Are you with me? So we need to walk in newness of life. It's not going to work when we're walking naturally after Jesus. The disciples did that. Look at Peter. Uh, Peter said to the Lord, Lord, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Jesus turns to him and says, before the cock crows, you will have denied me three times. How many times you've made promises and then forgot it? Did you do it in the spirit or did you do it in the flesh? Well, we probably did it in the physical. We'll just make the benefit of that. We want to make sure that when we're doing things, that they are in the realm of the spirit, inspired by the spirit. Why? Because it's so much more fulfilling. The enemy can't steal it from you. Jesus said it this way, even if you give a prophet a glass of water in the name of a prophet, you will by no means lose your reward. I mean, something as easy as giving a glass of water? Yeah. When Bob comes up here and he doesn't have to be asked to do his job and he gets all that done, he, doesn't re he receives his reward. He doesn't lose it. Amen. All right, so let's go on. A couple of points I want to bring up uh, uh, under Romans 6. Walk from your heart out, uh, outwardly in love. The Bible says, walk with wisdom to those that are without, redeeming the time for the days are evil. Amen? You're going to go meet somebody on a job interview. Don't be a flake. Don't show up in your sweats. How'd a guy do that? These people went out of their way to get this guy a job interview. Nobody you know, so don't try to figure it out. You see how we are. And maybe you're not like that, but some people are. 
Was it me? Was it, you would know if it was you. But because the guy did not treasure all the work that went in to try to get him a job, he shows up in his sweat. You see, there has to be a purpose. There has to be a preparation. There has to be a desire to put things in a higher realm to treasure things. So we put value on them. Hello. I put a lot of value in all of you. One person misses church and my heart goes out. Why? Because I treasure you. Well, don't treasure me. I'm nothing. Well, you don't think yourself anything. I still treasure you because God does. Okay, to walk from your heart outwardly in love, this will get you promoted in spiritual things. Two, who we are in Christ will set us free from the bondages of our fallen life. You see, the Bible says we're new creatures in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away. So why are we still letting old things kind of keep us in bondage? What do you mean, Pastor? Well, Colossians 2 says, the servant watching of, of new moons and Sabbaths and holidays, which God used as a shadow of what was to come, Christ being the very substance. Do you seek after a sign? Then the sign shows up and, oh, yeah, man, God's going to come today. We know the signs are all gone. And then the, the moons move on and the signs go on and the book is over and done with and a couple of years old. And they're still standing around there. Show us a sign. Where would the sign be? The sign would be on the earth where things are corrupted, where things change. The signs that God is going to show you and I are in the heavenly realm where neither moth nor thief can break in and steal. What do you mean? No sign shall be given this generation except the sign of Jonah the prophet, who was three days and three nights in the belly of the well, who now is at the right hand of the Father making intercession. You see, nothing to do with the physical sign, nothing to do with the stars. These are all types and shadows. So the idea is the devil knows that we're subject to things that we see at times. We're subject to things that we hear. You, I want to be so established in Christ and so established in depositing in my heavenly bank account and treasuring things of God way above anything that's created. Why? That even when a counterfeit comes, I can look right through it. You see, we are not to look at the things that are seen, but rather we are to look at the things that are not seen. Can you say amen? Because the things that are seen are subject to change. They can decay. But the things that are not seen are eternal. They never change. How about Jesus? Is he the same what? Yesterday, today, and forever. You put your faith in Jesus, then you will be solid. Put your faith in things, new jobs, new toys, new this, new that. Okay, are you cold? Okay, all right. <laughs> all right, amen. And finally, we are to walk in the Spirit. Say amen. Now, folks, does anybody here not know what it means to walk in the Spirit? Can I give you a little definition? To walk in the Spirit means to walk in the realm of a spherical bubble. The A.S. World translation, he only lived long enough for the New, uh, New Testament. But when he says, walk in the Spirit, it says, walk in the bubble or the realm of the Spirit. So you are a spirit being, and there's a realm God set up for you to walk in every moment, every day of your life. But you have to choose to walk in it, and usually that choice starts at the beginning of your morning. When you meet with God and say, God, here I am, unbrushed teeth, big cup of coffee, 
coffee breath, messed up hair, but I've come to make sure that I set myself with you and that you make all the adjustments in me so that I am in the realm when I leave here in the realm of the spirit and my steps are being ordered from the Lord and my plans and the ways are your plans and your ways which include a lot for me. See, every time I obey God, there's a lot of residual there for you, for me. Hello? Have you ever gone to the store and the very things that you have need of all on sale? And you go, wow, you hadn't doing anything but just talk with the Lord during the day. Nothing special. Wow, Lord. It's like the Lord says, see, you meet with me, you allow me to kept direct your steps, help you. We got this idea that if we do, he's never going to let us have fun. He's never going to let us have joy, meet new people. We're going to have to be this rigid, God-fearing person. That, no. No, you should be the happier than you've ever been before. You should be full of more love. You should be filled with all kinds. Why? Because you're allowing him to take the ascendance in your life and make the choices of your life. So there's not even any guilt because if he's helping you with the choices of your life, you know they're good choices. You know they're the right choices. All right, moving right on to our next point. The life I now live. You have to make a choice. Did you know that happiness is a choice? People that are sad choose to be that way. I'm going to say that again. Happiness is a choice. People who are miserable or people that are sad choose to be that way. I'm going to say something else too. Not in every case this one, but most cases, people that are poor want to be poor. What do you mean? They're always going without and they're always talking as they have nothing. And they're always letting you know what they don't have while at the same time wishing they had more. Moving right along. Okay. The life that I now live, this is you and I. Galatians 2.20, there's a song that says, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless. I live, yet not I, but Christ who lives in me. How many's ever heard that one? I used to sing it all the time. But the scripture says that very thing. I have been crucified with Christ. That means you're, you're not living your life anymore. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. In other words, hey, I'm solidly in Christ. Can you say amen? A couple of points underneath that. True frustration comes. True frustration comes from trying to live for Christ in the natural. Hello? We are to walk in the realm of the spirit, breaking free from the bondages of flesh. Oh. I forgot to pray today. God, do you still love me? I think everybody in the world said something like that. Two, set your treasure on God and his provisions. First, do it first thing in the morning. It's renewed every morning. New every morning. Right? Great is his faithfulness. To me, new every morning, it's new every morning. How would you like to have purchased that new car and you know you drove it through the mud that day, you get up in the morning and it's brand new again. Mud's gone, there's nothing out of order. And then you go out there and you, running through a bunch of things, it rained and all that, that next morning it's new. Why? Because you brought it to the car wash. You brought it to the people that do the detailing on the inside. His name is Jesus. Those of you watching at the garage, 
You need to come and you need to get renewed and reset every morning. Why? Because then your growth can only be blamed on God. And you can't take the credit yourself. And we have a lot of people running around taking credit. <sighs> Not my first rodeo. No, but I tell you what, you don't know which end of the horse to get on. We can laugh a little bit. I heard it on a commercial yesterday. I mean, that's one of the statements I, I, I prayed I never, ever would hear again is it's not my first rodeo. So try to get it out of your bouquet <laughs> because it was just so put in my face so much. And then the person that did all that, you could tell he was getting on the wrong end of the horse all the time. Everybody else was a ding-dong, but he was having a rodeo. And you say, well, you know, I don't like it when you share a little bit like that. Well, just avoid doing that. No self-bragging, right? Okay, set your treasure on God and his provision, not on promotion of ourselves. Who are we anyway? Amen. We're supposed to die to self, aren't we? And finishing up, next point, okay? Teach, Lord, teach us to walk in the spirit. Now, when you hear the term walk in the spirit, what does it mean? To walk in, yeah, that's very good, Peggy. Walk in the realm of the spirit. If I can help a little bit more, one of the things that God teaches me in sometimes with pictures, he says, you're traveling in a wonderful car, 55 miles an hour. It's hailing and raining outside. Mud is everywhere. You do not think about getting out at 55 out of the car. You are in the realm of the car. Aren't you? You're in the realm of the car. You want to make sure the car stops, hopefully under a garage, right? Well, when you hear the term in Christ, in him, in whom, which is there are 133 of them, just in the New Testament alone, it's talking about in the realm of God, and you're traveling in the realm of God. What do you mean? You're already in motion. Don't get out of God and find road rash. Don't leap out of the car or out of the realm of God to operate in the flesh and then think you're going to jump back into the car and get all the benefits, all the things are going without reacclimating with the car. You ever try to draw, jump on a car when it's driving at 55? And that's what we do. We don't think we're doing it. But instead of meeting with God, we meet with him sometime in the afternoon. Car's been traveling. God's somewhere up here, and you're somewhere over here. And now you're running up trying to catch God to get back in the spirit. Aren't you glad God is man enough and God enough to stop and let you get in? Amen. Moving right along. Galatians chapter 5, 16 uh, 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 and 17, and then we're going to drop down into 18. Okay, so it says, I say then, this I say then, walk in the realm of the Spirit, and you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. There, it just gave us a formula. You know, I used to say, God is more than the formula. Of course he is. But he's left us a lot of formulas. Walk in the spirit, and you won't have to worry about the flesh. Stay in the car, and you won't have to worry about the rash. Hello? Even if you're not doing much in the car, stay in the realm of God. Can you say amen? Walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts or desires against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary one to another so that you do not do the things that you wish. Didn't Paul say something like that? Romans 7, 
the good that I wanted to do upon myself, not being able to do. Then he says, oh, wretched man I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Romans 7, the very, very last. He said, I thank you through Jesus Christ. Stay in the car. You ever said that to your kids? I'm going to the ladies' room. Stay in the car. You, you come back, and here they are outside of the car. You know, the neighbor's dog bit them in the, in the shin. You're going, what in the world's going on? It's going to take a time for you and I and those of you watching to stay in the car more accurately and not want to get out and sample the flowers. This world is not our home. We're just a passing through. Our home is laid up way beyond the blue. The angels beckon me through heaven's open door and I don't feel at home in this world anymore. And the more I walk with God, the less I and less I'm caught up with the things. Oh, I'd love to go to Niagara Falls. I'd love to fly, do a few things. But you know what? I'm not getting out of the car to do it. <laughs> God wants me to have it or experience it. He will move me in that direction. Can you say amen? All right. So he says, but if you, <laughs> they're contrary to one to another. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. What does that mean? Well, Paul is writing to Galatians, and Galatians were many churches, some filled with Jews, some filled with Gentiles, is usually half and half. So he says, those of you that want to be perfected by the law, you're not going to find yourself doing it. All you're going to do is get road rash. It's kind of like saying, Jesus, thank you for the grace. Thank you for salvation. I got it from here on out. Had some wonderful people. Oh, they were wonderful people. They started off as Christians. But they got caught up on all this Jewish stuff. And they're finding they have to renounce it. They won't even have a Christmas tree. Won't even celebrate Christmas. Which, you know, I know is a pagan holiday. But I don't celebrate Christmas as a pagan holiday. I don't fall down and worship the Christmas tree. You see what I'm saying? They forget the purpose of why something is done rather than just celebrating. I like to celebrate. It's your birthday. Let's celebrate. I'm not falling down and worshiping you. Anyway, this wonderful Christian abandoned most of their Christianity and most of their grace. And, and, I, I, and they, they were just caught up in this Jewish Saturday, have to have Saturday church and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, I'm not putting them down per se, but if you're giving up one thing to embrace another then you have replacement theology. How can you replace an old covenant? How can you replace, excuse me, how can you replace a new covenant with an old covenant? You can't. You got two covenants on your house. One's old, one's new. Which one do you need to pay attention to? Yeah. So how come we grow stupid when it comes to the Old and New Covenants? So yes, we study the Old Covenant. We understand what they were. But you see, they were bound by the law. They were bound by doing the law. Why? Because if they got out of order, Satan would have stopped the Messiah from being born. So they had to follow. So this wonderful couple, I said, well, you know, now I found out what you guys believe and everything. Is there any questions you want to ask me? Now, notice what I said. There is, is there any questions you want to ask me? Like, am I going to cause you to want to do this? Am I going to argue with, you know, what you believe in? And I was hoping to get a question like that. They didn't give me a question. They gave me a statement. They said, please don't take our Sabbath away from us. And I'm looking at them like, what are you talking about? First of all, the Sabbath is Jesus, not a day anymore. So if you want to have a Sabbath on a Sunday, do. Isn't it amazing that Jesus didn't choose the Sabbath to rise from the dead? Because he wanted everybody to know that the old was passing away 
that he would rise on the new. First day of the week, Sunday. But he didn't change the Sabbath. He just became it. Oh, glory to God, glory to God. Jesus is our Sabbath. So you can worship him every day of the week, every time of the day, all day long. Why? Because he's in the realm of where thieves cannot break in and steal. He's in the realm where moths can't corrupt. He's in the realm where you and I will live eternally. So those that are in Christ, those that are Christ, have crucified the flesh where our major problems exist. And it's passions and desires. If we are in the Spirit, let us also live by the Spirit. So Colossians, last scripture, 3, 1 through 3, says this. Colossians 3, 1 through 3. If then you were raised with Christ, Paul is writing to them. Don't forget, guys, you're raised with Christ. If then you were raised with Christ, seek what? Crave after those things which are above. Now, now, that's why the book of Hebrews was written. You know what the book of Hebrews is all about? Jesus Christ is better than all Old Testament types and shadows. That's what the book of Hebrews is about. That's why these people that do the, the Hebrew completion of the Jews type messianic stuff, again, they're believers. But that's why that book was written. Because you can't replace Christ with a thing. Hello. You replace Christ with nothing. You embrace Christ. So seek those things which are above where Christ is at the right hand of God. Set your mind. This is your mindset. Set your mind. This is your mindset on things above, not on things of this earth. For you died. Woohoo! Your life is hidden with Christ in God. And so when Christ, who is our life, appears, when he's ready to rapture us home, then you will also appear with him in glory. Guess what? So you and I are reinvesting our 401ks. Amen. We're getting him out of the temporal realm and placing him in the spiritual realm. Now, I'm not talking about physical poor when. I'm ta- we're investing in the kingdom and its principles. If you got something out of that this morning, would you give the Lord a praise? How many, how many gained something new?